Hello and welcome to My Mage. I'm Kai Ball, and today we'll be working on Witchery and Botania. Now, as far as Witchery goes, we'll be making a new book, Witchcraft Herbology. We'll work on making some mutandus, and then we'll mutate plants in order to make ourselves an altar. Now, as far as Botania goes, we'll make our way towards day blooms and nightshades. We'll also make a mana manipulation device known as a spreader and a mana pool in order to store all of that precious magic we're going to be making. So let's get right into it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to work on is making a book known as Witchcraft Herbology. And this will allow us to make uh, more complicated plants and should give us a recipe involving mutandus that will allow us to make the particular trees that we need in order to get witchcraft up and rolling. So first we're going to need a poppy, a dandelion, a feather. Luckily I've already got a feather on me and some black ink. There, put a little thing there, and there goes a the book, and bam. Witchcraft Herbology. Now we take a look in here. Many common plants are used in the preparation of brews and magics. This book details the rare and exceptional plants. So we've got the belladonna flowers, which we've been farming a bit of. Ember moss, which will require uh, mutating this plant from another with mutandus. Glintweed is also another mutant. Then we have mandrakes, which uh, in most common folklores will scream very loudly and very uh, abusively and damage your ears. Now, it, unfortunately, bramble, artichokes, critter snares, all kinds of things that I can mutate and all kinds of things that I can make, but unfortunately I don't seem to have a recipe for mutandus. So, I seem to have made a slight mistake. I think what I need actually is a book known as, ah, here we go, which is Bruise. Okay, this is a nice easy one. So Witch's Brews is what uh, the book that we're going to use to make brews involving the cauldron, which we made in the uh, intro episode. So in order to make Witch's Brews, I simply need a feather, some ink, and some dirt, and a book. So I've got everything but the feather. Let me make sure I don't have any feathers elsewhere. Um, there we go. All right. So we can make this really quick. And see, as you can see, it's such a, it's a very basic thing to make, so it's a very, it's going to be a starter uh, type of book, but it's going to have everything inside of it we need. So here we go, we got Witch's Brews, Introduction, Brewing, Cauldron Rituals, and Rituals will, will require power from the altar, so we're going to be moving the cauldron around to where the altar is as well. We have all of these different tabs here, but we're going to look up is Crafting because we're going to be using these to craft some things. Now we've got the crafting recipes right here, and what we want to make is Mutandus. So in order to make mutandus, I need mandrake root, exhale of the horned one, and an egg. Now in order to make exhale of the horned one, uh, I should be able to find it pretty easily within this menu, right here. Exhale of the horned one, we need to burn oak saplings in the witch's oven. And we need to make clay jars in order to burn those to capture the scent. So to, we'll grab our clay, and we will craft ourselves some clay jars with this little recipe right here, nice and easy. And as you can see, it's a one-to-one, -one, so for 64 clay balls, I get 64 soft clay jars. And we're going to throw these in to cook for a minute. And while we're doing that, I am going to go searching for some mandrakes in order to grow up some mandrake root. Ah, there we go, some mandrake seeds, cool. That didn't take too long. Okay, now, go. Ahead, we're going to go ahead and also just uh, do a quick farming thing here. I'm sure you all have done this plenty of times before. You only get one seed, but you want to... Uh, let's go ahead and equip a sword. Now, the reason I'm equipping a sword is when you go to break mandrakes, a lot of the time they do that. Get this little screaming bastard. Get up. Ah, it's impossible to hit. I give you nausea and scream at you very loudly. Oh, God, that is horrifying. And, oh, there we go. Now, they've got about five hit points of health, but when you kill them successfully, you get Mandrake Root. And hopefully some more Mandrake Seeds, which are right there. I will need to drop these Barley Seeds for, but that's okay. And we're going to do that one or two more times. That way we can get a pickup of seeds rather than having the same amount. Now, on occasion, you can get lucky, and the Mandrake will come out dead. So you don't have to do all this unnecessary fighting crap. There we go. Oh, that nausea is killer. Alright, one more time. Yep. I got you this time, buddy. Aha! I'm not getting any pickup on seeds, though. And this is actually kind of a strange occurrence, because usually I'm pretty good at getting more seeds. Ah! Get away! Stop! 
Oh my god, this, this is so frustrating. What's good is eventually... Uh, oof, there we go. Eventually I can make a set of earmuffs that will allow me to uh, deal with mandrakes without having to listen to them. Those are belladonna seeds. I got a couple of those, actually. Let's go ahead and plant those down. Pick up my mandrake seeds. And obviously we're not going to get a return on them, but I do have four mandrake roots, so we'll stick with that for now. Uh, also, I needed to burn some oak saplings, which I unfortunately do not have right now. And I don't have any gravel either. Er, gravel, wow. I don't have any coal, excuse me. Yeah, get out of here, zombie. Alright, so daytime and back to it. As I was saying, we're going to run over to our witch's oven, and uh, I don't have any... Oh, uh... I don't have any clay or coal. Wow, I can't. I can't speak today. I don't have any coal, so I'm simply going to use oak wood, and we're going to go ahead and burn some oak saplings. Now, if I simply burn them, I won't capture any scents because I don't have jars in. But with adding the jars, um, two seconds, one second, bam, there we go. I got some wood ash, but unfortunately, no, uh, no exhale of the horned one. This happens about one quarter of the time, essentially. Every, for every uh, four of these that burn, you're guaranteed at least one of these. Now, there are ways to improve those odds, and we'll talk about that a little bit later in the uh, series, but for now, we're just working on getting the simple stuff that we need, the exhale of the horned one and whatnot. So we're going to let that burn for a little while, and actually, you may think that this is kind of worthless, the wood ash, but it's actually a uh, necessary component in certain things, which is kind of amazing, actually. But it will be it will be useful for later. So we've got Exhale of the Horned One, and we have uh, the Mandrake Root. Now the last thing that we need is, of course, eggs. All right, so we've got the eggs, the Exhale of the Horned One, and the Mandrake Root that we need to make the uh, Mutandus. So as you can see, it has an altar powder cost of zero, which means it doesn't cost anything from the altar to make this. And uh, we really don't even have an altar, so it'd be kind of weird if it did. So what we need to do is uh, throw these in in this order because uh, certain things can start off with different stuff and come out with different orders. So we're going to get a mandrake root and then exhale of the horned one and then an egg. And we get to watch this little animation. Looks really cool. And just like that we have... Come on, there we go. Look at that. Some mutandus. Awesome. Now, for each one of those, you get six mutandas, so it's a pretty decent give back. So, for the intent, for the purposes of this, I'm gonna keep using the blood magic water sigil, and keep refilling this. That way, uh, I have a steady source of water, and I can keep doing this. So we're gonna do it one more time. Mandrake root, exhale the horned one, and one egg. Now I'm out of eggs, so we're just not gonna do worry about that anymore. Now, while that's crafting more of that, I'm going to walk over here and show you how this stuff works. Basically, you take some mutandus and you right-click on any vanilla plant, or any natural plant, really, but it won't work with botania, I know that for a fact. So what we're going to do is right-click the standalone, and bam! It turned into an oak sapling, which actually isn't very useful, but we'll leave it there to grow. Do it this one. Oh, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. Some Spanish moss. And I didn't make myself any shears. I have some emeralds. Instead of making, um shears, as I normally would have, what I'm going to make is something called a bowline, and that is a witchery uh, item, very specific, that allows you, it's basically a set of shears, but it allows you to do some specific things that shears can't do. Now, what I need is to find my bones. My bones, my bones, my bones. I put them away somewhere. I need to find a home. Okay. So, we got a bone, so we're just going to stick I think it goes this way, and then an emerald, and then a piece of iron on top. Nope, that is wrong. Bone in the middle? Yes, that's right. Okay, so now we have a bone, a bowline, like shears, but this can harvest trapped plants and cobwebs. That is the specific thing to the bowline, is that it can harvest cobwebs. And those are very useful as far as witchery goes, because this will allow you to make certain brews, like the brew of webbing, that will allow you to trap enemies or use cobwebs in order to mutate different things. That's going to be a bit more of advanced witchery, and we'll work on that a bit later. So we have some Spanish moss. That is really good. We're going to go ahead and hang some of this up here and let it grow. Uh, let it grow, let it grow, let it grow. Right there. That'll work. And we're going to keep on mutating plants until we get the stuff that we need. So we're going to mutate this poppy. We'll get another oak sapling. I'm going to mutate that again. I got a mushroom. Uh, rowan sapling. That's what I'm talking about. This is one of the most important trees. So we're going to let this bad boy grow. Yeah. I'm going to let that grow. I feel like this is going to be in the way, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this down while we let these two trees grow, and then when we get back, we'll work on making that altar that I promised. 
Okay, well, I'm tired of waiting, so we're just gonna bone me all these bad boys. Make myself a tree. Bada boom, rowan tree. Fantastic. So we're gonna cut this down the casual way. And da 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 da. Bam. Nice and easy. Unfortunately, I didn't pick up any of those wood, which I kind of need. Oh, let's just toss out this iron ingot. Throw out these rowan berries. Now, I don't know if rowan berries are ever used in crafting when it comes to this mod, but I do know they're very tasty, and they're good to eat, but they only do about a drumstick, maybe a half a drumstick, uh, as far as protein goes. Let's go ahead and grow up this rowan sapling. As oh. Okay, let's not, obviously. Let's throw this one back down where it was, and let it do its due. So, we have six rowan woods, which is really useful, because now we are able to make ourselves the altar blocks. Now what we need to make altar blocks is Breath of the Goddess and Exhale of the Horned One. I still have three Exhales of the Horned One, but I need Breath of the Goddess now. And I know for a fact, uh, without having to look at the book myself, that Breath of the Goddess comes from Birch Saplings. Now, I did mention this was a 1 in 4 chance in getting these, so having four of them is not going to be very useful to me if I'm lucky. If I am lucky, like legitimately lucky, uh, I could get away with getting two breaths of the goddess. I got away with one already. Get rid of these eucalyptus saplings. Oh man, wow, that stuff spreads fast. Holy cow. And so far still on the one. Look at that, there we go, the glintweed is spreading too. I love wood tree. So we're going to plant ourselves a glintweed here, next to this grown rowan tree, and a glintweed here. And those will, as I said, spread out. Everything's going to work its way around. Uh, unfortunately, I did not get lucky. I only I only ended up with one breath of the goddess. So, what I'm gonna need to do is chop down another birch tree, get myself some more saplings, and uh, cook down some more breath of the goddess. And we will be right back once I finish that off. All right. So now I've got everything collected, and I've got everything that I need. Let's make ourselves an altar for witchery. I almost rhymed that one again, but let's not keep up with the rhyming stuff. I'm obviously very bad at it. So let's make ourselves some glass bottles. And uh, you know what's going to be really cool is that since we know this doesn't flow, I'm going to stick a water source right there. And we're just going to bop, bop. There we go. How fucking cool is that? Uh, let's stick this water bottle up in my potion shelf here. And grab that one, because we're going to need two of these. And then grab our stone. I know I have some stone. There we go. Put that right there and make ourselves some stone bricks. Four, eight. Okay. So now we're going to put two of those there. And then we're going to double up the row and saplings. Put both of the breasts of the goddess here. And two of the exhale of the horned ones here. And a water bottle because we can't sack them. And we get three altar blocks. Now you're going to have to have six of these, which is why I need two of everything. And there we go. Six altar blocks. Now... The altars don't work the same way that they did in Old Witchery. In the Old Witchery, you were able to set an altar in the middle of a uh, ring, essentially, which allowed you to uh, power that ring. But unfortunately, having anything within that ring now will cause it not to work. So altar blocks uh, are included. So what we're going to do is we're going to be rather strategic, and we're going to place our altar up here. I like this spot. And that way we can have our rings down there. Nice big open area. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And there we go. And that will show you that you've completed the altar correctly. Now we right click it and you see that it already is drawing power from uh, the surrounding area. So the altar is actually very customizable in that it will allow you to set certain things on it that will allow it to uh, gain power more quickly, it will allow it to hold more power, it will allow it to distribute more power, and it will allow you to, allow you to distribute power in a bigger range. But for now, I think that's a good place to uh, stop with Witchery, and we'll move our way on to Batania. Alright, let's get to it. Alrighty then, back here and ready to go. Now, if you recall, I mentioned that I ended up tearing down most of this mountain, but I haven't quite gotten it all replaced with the dirt that I need. But who wants to keep digging out all of the stone just to replace it with dirt? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of these pure daisies that I made in the uh, intro episode, which I have neglected to leave a link to the intro, and I'm going to do it and place it right here in the top right corner. There it is, like a little button. Bing! And then we've got, uh, and now we've got these things going and working on digging up the stone for me. Well, not really digging up the stone, I should say, but turning it into something much more purposeful. So while all this stuff is transforming, to show you how to make uh, some of the flowers that we need. So the first thing we need to do is check out our lexicon. Oh, there it goes. Look at that. Man, that was quick. Bam, ba da da, bam. All right, cool stuff. 
Okay, so we're going to take a look in our Lexical Botania, and we're going to go into what's known as the Generating Flora. And the very first thing, as you see, it's even got little italics, is known as a Day Bloom. So the Day Bloom is the most basic and rudimentary generating flower. In simply put, it performs a modified photosynthesis in order to transform sunlight into mana. Uh, I don't know why I keep making bookmarks. I keep thinking that's the page ahead, but it's down here. So the fact not only applies to day blooms, but also to nightshades, which will actually produce a little more. It also shows you about diminishing returns. If you have your setup like this when it comes to day blooms, each adjacent flower won't be able to produce a specific amount of mana because it has too many flowers next to it. A good assortment is uh, set up right about here on the right side. Uh, I'm circling with my mouse, but I forgot that I'm not capturing my mouse cursor, so it's kind of stupid of me to do that. But it's good to make X's rather than squares, is basically what I'm trying to say. So in order to make a day bloom, we need mystical yellow petals, mystical light blue petals, and mystical orange petals. And we're also going to go ahead and look up the day, the nightshade. Here it is, down here. Uh, look up what we need here. We need mystical black petals, gray petals, and purple petals. Okay, so I also <laughs> went out picking for quite a lot of flowers. So we're going to pull our black flowers, our purple flowers, and our gray flowers. That's light gray. We need regular gray. Now I'm not going to use all of these, I'm just grabbing all of them. And then I need mystical yellow flowers, mystical light blue flowers, and mystical orange flowers for the day blooms. I've also got plenty of barley seeds. Now as I said, uh, barley is a uh, mod from Natura, mod known as Natura, and uh, it's going to allow us a little easier way to get a hold of uh, the seeds that we need. Now I could go, I could grow wheat just the same, but I like using barley because you can turn barley straight into flour and then turn that straight into bread. It's a one to one ratio rather than a three to one, which you get with the normal stuff. So what we need is two on the blacks. We're gonna we need two of each of these and then one of each of these four. So what we're gonna do is one, two, three, and this will make us three flowers. Uh, we better make five. Or no, we make four of the dark ones, so four flowers and five of the light ones. One, two, three, four, five. And there we go. And then same thing with these. One, uh, two. We only need half the amount when it comes to the other ones. And one, two. See, like I said, I'm not going to be using anywhere near all of these. So there's the ones for the nightshade. And then one, two, three. We're gonna have to do three because of the amount necessary. And one, two, three, as well. And there we go. So that's the purple petals, the black petals, the yellow, orange, and light blue, and the grays. And we're gonna move all this stuff around here. We're gonna go ahead and do one at a time. We'll do the. We're gonna do the uh, day blooms first. Two and three. There we go. Put away our white petals that we were using to make some daisies earlier. And then this will allow us to make all of the flowers that we need. So we're going to follow the recipe to the key. Two yellow petals, one orange petal, one blue petal, and one seed. And there we go. We have a day bloom. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this one here. And we're going to go ahead and continue on making the rest of these. Uh, first thing I'm going to do, though, is show off making the nightshades. It's going to be the same thing, but I just want to show you what the nightshades look like. That way we have a bit, a bit of an indication, two, three, and four, of what we're making. There we go. And this here is a nightshade. This basically, it works the exact same way as the day bloom, except it works at night time. And that's the whole point of them, is so you have 24-7 mana manipulation. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and make the rest of these and make up everything that I need, and I will be, uh, we'll get right back to where I need to be, and we'll get to making uh, new things and better things. All right. All right, that's all the flowers we need made, so we're going to go ahead and set them up in a pattern much like this, just like it shows off in the book. This is the way you want. Now, I know that it mentioned diminishing returns when you had the same kind of flowers together, but if you have them in a cross-ways pattern, you keep the uh, positive returns without losing anything. Now, you see these are all sparking up nice and good. That's because they're filling up with mana, but how on earth are we supposed to tell how much mana is in these? Well... That's exactly where the Wand of the Forest comes in, and that's what we're going to be making right now. I'm going to use Diglett. I did mention that uh, this is an Ars Magica spell, and we're going to be using it throughout the mods because it's just such a such a useful thing to have that it will just be it'll allow me to break apart anything without having to switch over weapons and carry too much stuff in my inventory. 
I'm also gonna need some of this living rock. I don't like this rain at all. Ha! Huh. Take that, rain! Alright. So now we've picked ourselves up a little bit of the living rock and a little bit of the living wood. So what we're going to make now is what's known as a wand of the forest. I should have a crafting bench around here somewhere. Dude, you've got to stop hanging out at my house. Like, seriously. He doesn't do anything here but hang out, float around, and just make weird noises. Okay, so over here we're going to take the living wood and craft it just like we would sticks. However, if you note, I can actually make planks out of this. So this is technically a log I'm turning straight into a stick. Uh, I believe I need two, three twigs, so we're going to make three twigs. And then we're going to use these two remaining petals that I have here to customize our wand, because what's cool about it is that you can make the wand whatever color you want. As you see, I've got the blue and the orange right there, but if I switch them up, I got the orange and the blue. Pretty cool stuff. So we've got ourselves a wand of the forest. Now you notice it says function mode. If I shift right click, it changes it to bind mode, and it gives it a little leaf on the end of it. Uh, you can see in the thing right there. And this is what allows you to direct some of the manipulating devices that I'll be making in a second. So we're going to switch it back to function mode. And if you see here, we've, got, we've now got a little UI for the day bloom. And I right click it, and you see it's full of mana. But if I right click the nightshade, it's got a little tiny bit. And it picked that up while it was getting dark when I slept a moment ago. It's also, it looks like it's still picking up mana actually, but very slowly. And these are all full, so what we need to do... And see, now, since I've identified them, I can look at them at any time, and I don't have to re-identify them. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make what's called a, um, a mana pool. Now, it's called a diluted mana pool to start with, because you have to make a weak one, and then make a more strong one uh, by throwing it into a good one. Now, as you see here, I already have a mana pool, but I'm showing you how to make the diluted one right here, which you see is a slightly lighter color, and it's very simple to make, the little U-shape with the, with the uh, living rock, excuse me. And what we're going to do is we're going to set down the mana pool, I'm going to put it right in the center, because I like center, right there. And then what we're going to need to make is something called a mana focus, I believe, or a mana spreader. Let me actually, let's check the book. I should never have to check NEI when it comes to Batania, because you should be able to find the recipe for everything. Here we go, a mana spreader. So a mana spreader is the most important component in manipulating mana. It allows the mana to travel from point A to point B, and that's it. It's very simple, very forward, very easy to use. You can also make mana spreaders work again, work with one another to in order to make it travel along distances, because I believe a mana spreader will only make mana travel somewhere in the direction of about 16 blocks. I'm not quite sure what the long range is on it, but let's find it out later. Okay, so what we need is living wood on the bottom, living wood on the top, a gold ingot, and some petals. Alright, so let's grab ourselves a gold ingot. And a, oh, hey, look at this. Ender lily seeds have grown. Hooray! We're going to plant that back. Ender lily seeds are awesome. Little extra utilities kind of thing that allows you to basically grow ender pearls. You can also do that in uh, magical crops, but at a slightly slower rate in a different kind. Oop, that's right there. At a different kind of pickup. Basically, a magical crops allows you to create an essence of that item, and then you have to craft those essences into that item. So, in order to make a an ender pearl, I believe I need eight essences, which would require either eight harvests or eight plants to allow me to make, I believe, four ender pearls. A bit of a diminished return, but not too bad. Now with this thing, though it takes, I believe, seven Minecraft days, and not that doesn't involve sleeping. Even if I sleep, it still takes the time length of seven Minecraft days. And that only occurs because I have it planted on some end stone. Had I planted it in dirt or stone, it would take an actual Minecraft month to grow one of those. So you've, you really got to get a hold of end stone quick. But the Farlanders mod helps out with that, because that allows you to... Uh, the Farlanders mod allows you to get a hold of end stone, because... They basically bring it with them whenever they come from the end to build themselves little huts. Okay, so there we go. We've got the recipe in, we've got the gold, and we have ourselves a mana spreader. Now, as you see, I've already made myself a mana spreader from prior, so we're going to utilize both of them eventually whenever we get into the more complicated mana manipulation. What we're going to do now is we're going to set the mana spreader here so that it's facing this pool, and there we go. Now, it will automatically detect any of these behind it, and uh, nearby it, and automatically send out all of the mana into the nearest mana pool, whatever it's pointing at. 
Now I did mention this has a bind mode, so what I can do is I can either just right click on it, uh, I'm sorry, I can shift right click and you see I'll select the device and we're going to set this diluted meta pool here and I can right click on, shift right click on that and it will point it towards that device and it will give it a better angle as well as you see it's leaning slightly downhill, though it would still work nonetheless. So what we're going to do is before it starts spreading any mana we're going to turn it back to where it's going and pick up this mana pool. Now I did warn about Diglett before about it being able to destroy things. So let's see. Nope, didn't destroy those. Good. So check this and now you see before I had an X I now have a check mark and this is how you make the uh, turn the diluted mana pool into a regular mana pool. Now I took all of that which was a load from two sets of these which I believe this thing will pick up oh, let's just set that right there for now. I believe this thing will pick up um, a burst every time it gets about a quarter of the way full uh, and it's gonna keep picking up you see now these are I do have to re I do have to re-click on them because it's not gonna show their updated mana con Amanda amount but they're never gonna have a mana amount because they're always going to be putting it into the mana spreader you see it's ticking up very slowly makes a cool little sound bleep, bleep. Bloop, almost digital, it's kind of cool. And it's going to keep kicking that stuff into the meta pool. Alright, well, uh, Batania is going very well, actually. That was a bit faster of a video than I suspected. So, you know what? What we're going to do, because I I love doing the bonus stuff, I love giving you guys a little more extra than uh, what I initially intended, we're going to go ahead and make ourselves a new kind of generating floor, something a little more uh, specific. Now, given the fact that we have witchery, and as you saw, I'm going to be needing to get a hold of a lot of different uh, saplings. That requires growing trees, cutting down the wood, cutting down, you know, just, just forests and forests of trees. And that's going to fill us up with wood and all kinds of stuff that we just don't need. I'm never going to build with that hopseed wood or any of the cherry wood. I'm not going to build with eucalyptus because it's, it's pink. and I, mean, I can't say I hate pink, but it doesn't seem like the best color for a, a house. Maybe a restaurant. Who knows? But what we're going to make is known as an endo flame. And the endo flame does that. It does that exactly. It will absorb any combustible items or blocks blocks dropped in the nearby vicinity, only one at a time, however, and burning them passively to generate mana while the fuel lasts. So what we're going to need to make this is a red petal, a brown petal, a light gray petal, and what's known as mana petals. And you get mana petals by infusing them with the magic within the mana pool. So as it stands, we have enough to make a petal, which is one petal. That's that's cool and all. But we throw this black lotus in. Very nice sound, and it's you didn't see it because this thing can hold a massive amount of mana, comparative to a diluted mana pool, which would have filled up about halfway. This only filled up by a, just a tiny little amount, but that will allow us enough mana to one, two, three, and four. Make everything that we need to make the flowers. And that is what's good about exploring, that you find everything that you need. So we're going to go ahead and toss in one, two, three, four, and five. We'll do it over here too. One, two, three, four, and five. And we have each of the petals. We have everything we need. You see that the uh, braziers are giving off, well, the uh, apothecaries, I should say. Uh, they're called braziers in witchery. They're giving off the particle effects to let us know that this is good to go. And we throw that in there, we get an achievement known as Meltdown. There we go. We have what's known as endo flames. Now, uh, I don't want to confuse the mana process, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this mana spreader up here, right like that, and then I'm going to and I'm going to direct it. Excuse me, using the wand of the forest in bind mode to this mana pool, and we're going to switch it off of bind mode, and then we're going to set two endo flames here and here, and we're going to make sure just to be on the safe side, that this end of flame is connected to this spreader and that this end of flame is connected to this spreader. Get off a of bind mode. Now, uh, I was going to use this eucalyptus wood to make a whole bunch of uh, living logs, but not too necessary right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to toss these logs right here. And you see, these are going to start producing mana. Ooh, there we go. You hear that sound? It's burning it up. we got these little particles going on that's showing off. Now you see, notice how frequently this is boosting, bursting, it's because these are producing mana at a much more accelerated rate. Not quite a huge amount, but comparative to these, a hell of a lot faster. As you see, this one hasn't burst in quite a while. 
you can hear the mana it's giving off. And if I right click on the spreader, you can see it fills up very, very, very fast. Comparative to the other ones, of course. And there we go. I'd say that's pretty good. Uh, the mana pool is getting a pretty decent amount. Look at that. Look at this one's already got as much as this one had after I threw in a uh, Black Lotus. Which is very, very impressive, I will say. Look at that. They've already almost burned through all the wood, too. It's a very passive burn, but it does what it needs to do. And you can see, if I keep pounding right click, you can see just where it, how far it'll go before it bursts the mana. Though these can hold quite the amount themselves. Okay, so it's already chewed through all that wood. Uh, we've got that done. We've made our nightshades and day blooms and the mana spreaders and the mana pools. We're going to be doing this to the entire field of stone here and replacing it all with dirt a little bit later. And of course we're going to turn ourselves some more living logs and uh, work our way towards manipulation. What's good also is, as I'm doing the other videos, this is going to continue to operate. Though it's a very small operation, I'll make it bigger eventually. And this will fill up uh, quite a bit for what I need to fill it up for. Making much more advanced bota uh, Botania magic and stuff. So I think that's good to go. We did everything in Witchery, we did everything in Botania, we're doing good. Uh, just wait until the next video, we're going to make some much more advanced Witchery components. We're going to make some potions even. And we're going to make a uh, few little bobbles items when it comes to Batania, and some things that will allow us to harvest much more uh, differentiated things. Um, all right, as always, I am Kaiball. Thank you all for watching. We will come back a little bit later with some new videos. And uh, th uh, thank you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe, and you all have a very good day. Cherry tree away. Yeah, cherries. The elusive flower by the name of the Black Lotus is known to exist, however it does not grow or reproduce. Where they can be found or come from is not known. It is known, however, that it contains a strong amount of concentrated mana that can be released by putting it in contact with a mana pool that already has some in it.